grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Welcome to this Good Friday worship service. This service will proceed um, unannounced. We ask that you remain seated um, for the duration of the service. Um, it will be a service of dramatic greetings and prayer and song. It is an audible worship service and less visual. So I invite you to, um, to lean into the sounds that you will hear um, this day. The service will end in silence, and so we ask that you uh, maintain that silence um, until you have left the sanctuary. And sometimes the end of the service isn't when you're ready to leave the sanctuary. So if you need to be here in the sanctuary, um, for whatever reason, to continue your own prayer, um, allow this space to be yours, and we will honor one another and maintain the silence in this room. But I invite you now to draw deep a breath and listen. When Jesus had finished saying all these things, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days, the Passover is coming, and the Son of Man will be handed over to be crucified. Then the chief priests and the elders of the people gathered in the palace of the high priest, who was called Caiaphas, and they conspired to arrest Jesus by stealth and kill him. But they said, not during the festival, or there may be a riot among the people.
In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. That's how I began. There was no other way. And if only the Word had remained a Word, I might have written nothing more. But the Word became flesh. He lived among us. He was one of us, and I... I was one of his disciples. How much? How much? Don't insult me. You know it has to be an inside job, and time is running out. So, and that's not enough. Remember, it's not just the end for him. It's the end for me. I don't have another job to go to, and there won't be any references unless you, no, you wouldn't want anyone to know you financed me. You're supposed to be above that kind of thing, like me. Well, you know, the difference between you and me is that I like him. I love him. All right. Tonight, I'll kiss him. I'll kiss him. Is the bag empty? It was in the garden. If we had known what was going to happen, we would have stayed awake but we slept. We were tired, you see, and then one minute we were awakened by Jesus. And the next thing, we heard voices everywhere, and then Judas appeared, and for a handful of silver, he kissed goodbye, our Lord. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, remember us today. Remember me and all those who scour the money market like slaves to profit and gain. We keep money and morality apart and blame the market, not ourselves, if there are any casualties. In case my conscience sleeps and I sell my soul, in case my vision blurs and I crush the poor, let the sound of tinking silver save me from following Judas. Amen.
What did I say? I didn't mean anything. I mean, it wasn't that kind of conversation. I don't mind discussing my faith with people who know about faith. Priests, ministers, you know the sort of people. But I mean to say, when you're just warming your hands at a fire and some trumped up chambermaid starts coming in all holy, I mean, you don't know who you're talking to. I didn't want to encourage her. I had other things on my mind. I just said, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'd say it again if... I'll not say it again. The next time I won't say anything at all. The next time, I'll avoid any kind of confrontation any kind of conversation. The next time, I won't even shrug my shoulders or shake my head. If I do nothing and say nothing, surely that way I'll neither affirm or deny him. At least Peter was there. He went all the way though at a distance. He even managed to get inside and stand with the soldiers and servants, heating his hands over the open fire. I don't know whether he thought he could remain anonymous, him with an accent, or whether he thought he had a way with words. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, remember me today, for I've got away with words, and I've got away with words. When I'm cornered, I don't commit myself, I just argue my way out of my corner, because there's a cost to commitment which I don't want to pay. If I am asked what I think about religion, I'll give a good reply. But if I'm asked if I follow you, I avoid the question, as if you weren't important. When I sit on the fence, let the sound of the cock crowing save me from following Peter. Amen.
I was only doing my job. I'm an administrator, a governor, a public servant. I'm not a social worker or a psychoanalyst. And even if I were, I might convince the prisoner, but not the crowd. I must say, though, I admire him. He didn't flinch. He didn't plead. He didn't give a last curse at authority, as some do when they know their next step is at the gallows. He was calm, not passive, but calm. He looked at me almost as if he understood my dilemma. I was moved, actually. I was very moved. But it's not my job to be moved. It's my job to administer. I have kept my feelings at bay and my conscience quiet, even when I know better. There's the crowd to consider. I couldn't see all the things that were happening, but I could see Pilate. And I could hear the crowd. It was like a gala day, not a holy day. Everybody wanted to, to know if Jesus would be sentenced to death. They didn't want a fair trial. They wanted blood, but they wanted someone else to do it. When Pilate said he couldn't find any guilt in him, the crowd went wild. It became obvious that it was either going to be Jesus' life or Pilate's job. So he opted for self-interest. I wonder if he can still live with his conscience. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, remember me today, me and all like me, who compromise with their conscience and make decisions which hurt and harm innocent people. And then when questions are asked, reply, I was only doing my job. In the face of people crying, I hide behind regulations. In the face of people who are breaking up, I watch the clock and long for the office to close. In the face of unjust laws, which I administer, I just do my job. When I get callous about human life, when I go by the book, even when the book is wrong, let me see your face in those I am hurting and let the sound of water save me from following Pilate. Amen.
So they took him from the judgment hall. They stripped him and they flogged him. And then they put purple cloth over his shoulders. And for a moment, he looked majestic. You couldn't see his wounds, just his face. Then they threw a wooden shaft over his shoulder and prodded him like a beast in a cattle ring and made him walk until he stumbled. Then they they made him walk again and forced a stranger to share his burden. I thought to myself, if we all carried it, it would be easier for him. Then I thought to myself, but who would dare? Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> I don't want you to think that I'm better than I am. I've wept before, lots of times. But I've been paid for it, lots of times. It's a kind of sign line, the way we have funerals. They are public occasions. If you're going to have a big wedding, you hire a big band, or at least two or three men with their mouth organs. Then the windows open, and the people come out to clap or dance and wish the best to the newlyweds. But if you're going to have a big funeral, you don't hire a band. You get some women like me who can cry at the drop of a hat to dress themselves in black and weep and wail for as long as you like. I wasn't dressed in black today. It was just my ordinary clothes. And it was no act. I wanted to cry. I wanted to cry for me and for every other woman that Jesus has helped or been good to. I wanted to cry for Mary, who used to be a prostitute. I wanted to cry for Margaret, who used to be an epileptic. I wanted to cry for Judith because everybody thought she was possessed until Jesus went in to have a meal with her. I wanted to cry for Anna and Elspeth and Runa because they had no fathers for their children, but he cuddled their kids. So I cried in anger at the men who want to kill our Savior and in anger at the men who do nothing to stop it. And still I cry because I love Jesus. There were crowds of them weeping at the street corners and on waste ground all through the city and up the hill to Calvary. And some said, it's just women. What else do you expect? And some spat on them. There was a lot of spitting that day. And Jesus, so they say, told the women not to cry for him. There were other things to weep about. <laughs> Lord Jesus, remember me and all like me. Find it easier to weep at a love story or sloppy film or even when my team wins find it easier to weep then than to weep for the people of Gaza or Ukraine who have had to flee their country seeking safety, or for the people who have no food, or the people seeking medical attention and finding themselves in lineups months long, or the teenagers whose minds are bent by social media to the point of not knowing how to learn through concentration anymore. I no longer weep when seeing folks begging on yet another London intersection, and they have no hope. Lord, when my tears only come through sentiment, let the sound of women crying remind me that there are other things to weep about. Amen.
I make crosses and I hammer nails for a living. I'm a curiosity in pubs when people have had one too many and want to know what it's like to nail flesh to wood. I never tell them. I just say, as long as society wants rid of what offends it, it'll need people like me to do the disposing. You wouldn't need trash collectors if there was no rubbish. You wouldn't need sewage men if there was no sewage. And you wouldn't need men like me to make crosses and hammer nails if you didn't need to get rid of people you don't want. Take this one, Jesus. If people didn't need rid of him, he wouldn't be crucified. What amazes me, and I speak as someone who has been at a thousand executions, is why he has to die. Why they want rid of him. I've had rapists swear at me. I've had murderers spit at me. I've had embezzlers fix me with their eye as if they would consign me to hell. I've never had anybody look at me through their tears and say, I forgive you. And I believe he forgives me. Me. But what about the others? What about all those who have edged him out of society and who have helped him onto the cross? Do they believe that he forgives them as well? After they had nailed him, they raised the cross, and everybody saw him. I was at the back of the crowd with his mother. She made me go near to the front, so I went with her. I heard all he said. I heard him cry out in thirst. I heard him promise paradise to the thief beside him. It was quiet. You see, no one wanted to speak. It was as if the crowd had found its conscience at last. And then I saw him look at his mother and at me and told us we belong to each other. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, remember me over 2,000 miles and over, two, and over 2,000 years stretch between now and Calvary, but nothing separates you from me. Your crucifixion is not in the past, it is here and now, and in a thousand subtle ways I betray you deny you, wash my hands of you, and condemn you. And all the goodness that I might have and all the good works that I might do and all the right decisions that I might make will never come to be unless I accept what I am, 
one of your persecutors. And unless I ask for your forgiveness, that I might become one of your friends. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh, because God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not die, but have eternal life. God sent his Son into this world not to be its judge, but its Savior. That's why he said, follow me, I am the way. And believe me, I am the truth. And accept me, I am the life. And you did not choose me, I chose you. And one day, with eyes wide open, and knowing what lay ahead, he said the words on which my hope, if today I can have any hope, on which my hope rests. Unless a single grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains a single grain. But if it dies, it produces many grains. And then he went on. Those who love their lives shall lose their lives. And those who lose their lives for my sake will keep their lives for eternity. Whoever wants to serve me, whoever wants to serve me must follow me. <laughs> 